The cells of the human body depend on receiving signals. They need to know when to store glucose, when to divide, when muscle should contract, when neurons should fire, etc. The molecules that send these signals typically do not enter the cell. How can a hormone or a neurotransmitter or a growth factor stimulate cells that it does not enter? Signaling molecules affect their target cells through second messenger systems in which activated intracellular second messenger molecules mediate the changes which occur out, uh, inside the cell. Converting a message outside the cell to a message inside the cell is known as signal transduction and is uh, performed by G protein. G proteins bind to adenylate cyclase and activate this molecule. Adenylate cyclase then binds to ATP, converting it to cyclic AMP, and cyclic AMP then performs changes in the cell. In this illustration, the G protein coupled receptor has not bound its ligand and the G protein has not been activated. As a result, adenylate cyclase has not been activated and the second messenger cyclic AMP is not being made to initiate changes in the cell. In this illustration, the G protein coupled receptor has bound to its ligand. As a result, it activates the G protein which stimulates adenylate cyclase, which then converts ATP into cyclic AMP. The cyclic AMP then initiates changes in the cell. What activates G proteins? Well, there is a family of proteins known as G protein coupled receptors, or GPCRs. These proteins activate the G proteins, which then in turn activate adenylate cyclase, which activates cyclic AMP, which can then mediate changes inside the cell. Now, G protein coupled receptors, or GPCRs, represent the largest gene family in the human genome, and also in the vertebrate genome, arguably the largest gene family in all of animals. G protein couple receptors can be modified. Changes in structure allow one protein to react to a substance different than another. They will both activate a cell, but one GPCR allows dopamine to activate a brain cell. Another GPCR allows FSH, the hormone, to activate a cell in the ovary. Another one allows an odorant to activate uh, a cell in the nose. Another one, uh, such as the opsins, may actually interact with light and activate a cell in the eye. So GPCRs are incredibly important, allowing our cells to respond to a whole host of stimuli, including uh, secreted hormones, local hormones, growth factors, odorants, and even light. The superfamily of G protein coupled receptors share a set of seven hydrophobic transmembrane regions connected to hydrophilic sections which will either form intracellular or extracellular loops. Modifications to the extracellular loops can alter the signaling molecules that the receptor can interact with. For example, the receptor for TSH only differs from the receptor for LH by two insertions in the extracellular domains. The modification of one amino acid uh, can often be responsible for the pharmacological differences between similar receptors. Not only has variation of the extracellular regions resulted in receptors which can react to a diversity of signaling molecules produced inside an organism, they also allow an uh, interaction with a diversity of stimuli from the environment, such as the signals for taste, smell, and even light. Mutations in GPRs can cause a variety of human disorders and are involved in the treatment of disease, being the target of perhaps 30 to 60 percent of modern drugs. Some mutations cause the receptors to not function and are known as loss of function mutations. So for example, growth hormone deficiency or diabetes insipidus may be caused by receptors which simply do not bind their appropriate ligands. 
Other mutations uh, are called gain-of-function mutations because the receptors will always stimulate the cell regardless of whether the uh, ligand is actually present. Uh, disorders caused by uh, constitutively active GPCRs would include precocious puberty, cancer, and hyperthyroidism and hyperparathyroidism.